Hey, Hal here. Just wanted to tell you we're excited about uh, our partnership with Minus 33. Minus 33 specialized marina wool base layers for outdoor enthusiasts. From tops and bottoms to hats, socks, gloves. And our gear is going to keep you warm and comfortable no matter what adventure you're on. Especially those big woods ones. We're a fifth generation family owned and operated. A New Hampshire wool and textile manufacturer. They have over 106 years of wool and expertise. And they started manufacturing wool and socks, the Mountain Heritage ones, in New Hampshire in 2018 with the idea that a quality product, affordable pricing, and can be worn and loved from season to season. No matter what uh, your experience level or skill is, so no one should feel uncomfortable or ill-prepared in the outdoor community. Having a reliable gear is one of the first steps towards a lifetime of passion or whatever activity it is. And my caveat to that is, is you got to wear your woolies. Caught is death. This is the Big Woods Bucks podcast. Come explore the Big Woods and Timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of Big Woods whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature Big Woods bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the Big Woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big Woods Bucks podcast. I'm your host, Hal Blood. Sitting here on opening day of deer season down at Parlin Lodge. Just finished a supper. Joe's here. Hello. Just coming off his big bow hunt in New York. Big, big bow hunt, yeah. Yeah. Got Big Ben sitting here. Hello. And good Lee. Hello. Bad Lee will probably make his appearance later in the month or something. Doubtful. Doubtful. He's got his got his camper all fixed up now. He's going to just blow in the wind or the snow, I guess. Oh, is that what he's doing? He's got it all rigged up for the weather? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got it all ready. Now, yep. is it true? I, I heard that in the podcast he raked you and Joe pretty hard over the coals on moose season. I haven't heard it, but I just heard that secondhand. He was... I was getting his so. digs in. I didn't think it was that bad until you just brought it up. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he had a good week that first week. So, yeah, he's going to rub it in. Yeah. He's, I know uh, Chris called me last week, and Sammy's going to follow him for a week during deer season. So, that'll be good for oh, Sammy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, Sammy D is going to be his cameraman. So he'll get a good oh. education with Bad Lee, you'll probably learn how to mix drinks and everything else. <laughs> yeah, where the strip clubs are. Yeah, I mean every good, every young yeah. kid should know all that yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. fifteen, got to know that stuff. I think Chris said he's going to make him go with me the week after to clean things back up. <laughs> yeah, he's going to learn all of his Bible verses. <laughs> <laughs> we got to deprogram him after he goes with. Yeah, Lib. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Is, is Sammy as tall as you yet? He must be pretty close. I think he's 6'2", he said. So, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. I'm 6'3", unless I've shrunk. Now. Do I look like I've shrunk? You called me a beanpole earlier. <laughs> Sammy, Sammy D is pretty lean. He's a beanpole. <laughs> yeah. That's why I call him the pickerel because he swims. He swims like a pickerel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, anyways, opening day of Maine's deer season. I mean, residence yep. day was Saturday, but. So we're not going to talk about cow hunts. <laughs> no, no, we're going to go right into deer season. It's yeah. deer season. Let's get we're, moose season we're, behind we're us. We're done with moose. <laughs> and uh, we got a little bit of balmy weather. Huh? I don't know. How, how warm did it get? must have got 65, didn't it? Hey, well, man. Deb said it was downtown, but where we were, we, we only saw the sun peak once. And it, <laughs> I, I thought it, was, it wasn't cold, but, I mean, it wasn't. I didn't get first, sweaty today. First thing this morning was actually nice. I, yeah. yeah. It was it was, frost. It was like a damp cold. So. Yeah, it, it was. It frost. Yeah. It went right to the bone. Yeah, it was but frost it was and then. But nice I just, and calm. I just wore my Microtex. I can't remember the last time I wore them deer hunting. My Microtex uh, 
thing, you know, pants there. And, what and are micro just put a, Well, it's that. It's like flannel, but it's uh, made like out of polyester, I think. I get it at Cabela's, and it, it, if you get it wet, it dries real quick. That's why I wear moose hunting all the time. And oh, okay. I wear it turkey hunt. It's warm. It's, it's like flannel, so even if it's cool in the morning, it's still a little bit warm or something, but fixing me up. I'm trying. And anyways, yeah. So I had that, just a wool, sh- little light, my light wool shirt. And it was good. I didn't get sweaty today. I did notice looking in the next week that cooled off some today, and there's precipitation. So I'm hoping it keeps on saying snow. Heading. Oh, is it saying? Oh now? yeah. Oh, okay. Two days, two different days. It's oh, talking good. about snow showers or really? snow or something. Yeah. All right, good. Next week, but we got to get through this week though. I hunted south of town today. <clears throat> it's the first time I've ever been up here and hunted south of town, but. I knew there weren't going to be snow anywhere, so yeah, I went down down south. Plenty of deer around. I it was I just I went to a spot I hadn't been to in a long time, and some old cuts in there from I don't know ten fifteen years ago, and I figured I'd just bought them high knobs up there. It's green on the top, and there's hardwood around the edges, and we ended up seeing four deer today. I think the first one was a buck, but we couldn't. I just see it go. A bound there out of sight, and then uh, doe and two lambs later on in the day. But I don't know as I've ever seen, you know, this time of year, you know, because the, the leaves have been down a couple weeks. But the deer droppings through the woods everywhere. Yeah, I mean everywhere. And beds, I see four beds today, and you don't see beds that often, you know what I mean, in the leaves and stuff. But I seen four beds today that were like last nights i believe because they were just as flat as can be and you could see tracks punch right into them you know it didn't like they went through yesterday's sun you know yeah yeah it was a uh, pretty interesting saw some quite a lot of buck rubs for the first you know this is october 31st and i mean i see a lot of buck rubs today in the woods you know I do too. I yeah, do. a lot of new ones. Quite a few ones. Yeah. yeah. What about scrapes? We saw, we saw more scrapes than we did rubs, but saw a few half-ass. Not, you know, they're not like I didn't see any that were like just dug right out like really good yet. But some I call them more like, you know, pawing around, messing around a little bit. You know, a couple of them were under a limb. You know, like they're going to be a better scrape, but I think it was half-hearted. I moved some cameras Just, around. Yours? I'm not guiding. I was just yours or somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone else's naturally. Yeah, yeah. I moved a couple of cameras that that I put out. Probably well, they were kind of set more for moose, and so I went and looked around and moved those. And anything on them? Nope. No. No. I mean nothing. I mean moose on them. Yeah. But uh, then I went and checked out. There's a couple fresh cuts here big hidden cuts i wanted to go look at and yeah. i went in there and there was a, there was actually i you couldn't see every it was like a couple little rises and you know valleys and stuff in there and i went out and and uh was there not really in the center of it but but kind of out towards the middle and i was probably there for six or eight minutes and all of a sudden i hear whoosh, and i looked they've been just down over the rise i don't know if the wind yeah. Finally got to him, whatever. But there was a couple of does out there in it, and yeah. and uh, and then coming out, I had a just like out of nowhere coming down the trail, a big spike. I mean, it didn't have big spikes, but it was a big bodied spike. Yeah, came across in front of me. So, did anybody yeah. stop at uh, Bishops? Did they tag any big deer at Bishops today? I didn't stop. I barely had enough time to get here. Yeah, so you were running late. We thought maybe you were dragging one. No, I just because I had to get home and take a shower and get the stuff in the vehicle, and we had to stop and get the desserts and all that stuff. So, just took a little bit. Ben got into a herd of deer today, didn't you, Ben? Yeah, yeah. I got three guys from uh, Michigan. Uh, you're doing a deer drive, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, not this time. No. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I had the younger of the uh, Elijah. It was his name, and he was with me for a little while, and his father and his other brother were out on the other side of the stream. We were just kind of, we made a plan to walk up this one little brook, 
um, try to stay within 100 yards of it or whatever. And then on the onyx there, the brook ended. I said, let's just meet at the end of where it, where it stops, and we'll get together after that. And uh, so we would left them about a half an hour later. We we were on. We definitely had the best side, and it was just it was perfect where right, where you'd want to be on a loud day. It was nice mossy bottom, good quiet going. So we were walking up through, and I I was I just kind of walk and grunt and stuff when it's no snow and there's not you don't really know what's going on. So I grunted and I got walking again. And all of a sudden, off to our left there, probably 40, 50 yards just across the alders. They had just exploded with noise, and I said, "What in the world?" I didn't know where it was at first, and I look up through the alders, and I could just see white flags going everywhere. They were everywhere, just big, really? one of the biggest groups of deer I've ever jumped up here ever. Oh no, ever. kidding! Yeah. I didn't hear that. I didn't realize yeah. you bumped into that today. So they they took off there, and I I grabbed Eli there, and I said, "Hey, let's get up to this opening." And so I grabbed him. We ran up, thinking we might get a, you know, an eyeball on one of them, but we didn't. So. They kind of all just stopped all at once, just out of sight. We just couldn't see them. So I grinded on the tube again there, and all of a sudden one started walking back. And so we're trying to, I'm trying to get him in position there, and I can't see it, he can't see it, but we can hear it. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Then it holds up. So we move a little bit just trying to get to where we can see. And it's walking back and forth, walking back and forth, and all of a sudden it just disappeared. It must have winded us something or decided to want to go with a group or whatever. But, yeah, yeah it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Makes for an exciting day. Yeah. They were blowing at us. I mean, I was surprised we got that close to them because there was early, just half an hour before that, we had three or four of them blowing at us, and we never even got within 200 yards of them. They were just, just they had us immediately. But do it was you, loud. Do you carry one of those big woods calls with you? I, I don't, no. I use that when those two does, when I blew them out of that cut, they went just to the edge of the woods and stopped. And, uh, I sat there just messing with them, kept blowing back at them, and I bet they stayed there for 20 minutes or, or more. Just oh, yeah. blowing back wow. and forth, back huh. and forth, back and huh. forth, yeah. I do blow with my mouth there, just, you know, you know, make a noise. <laughs> I know, I know. I knew as soon as it came out. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, why you always got to be like that? Yeah. I didn't say anything. I know. Can you talk about deer hunting? <laughs> yeah. Uh. Now I don't even know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> it all We're sounds bad. <laughs> we ended up, I, I took my guy into some places uh, where I went shed hunting when I took my guys uh, looking for moose sheds this spring. I found a couple of places that I thought looked like they might be good deer hunting because there was plenty of buck sign in there from last fall. So we went in two different spots. The first place... Uh, I went in, sat him down, made a big circle around him, jumped the doe. I guess he heard it blowing, but he didn't see it. It was, I think it was a doe because it blew for a long time. I didn't see any antlers. But then we went down in a place where I found quite a few moose sheds, and we walked down by a brook. It was warm today. Where we were, it was really warm. If you were out in the cuts, it was too warm to walk around. So we went down in the valley and walked along a brook, and found a bunch of scrapes and a bunch of rubs and then we found a we've been discussing it at the dinner table here but i found a it was on a brown ash and it was a really tall rub but it didn't really look like a uh, moose rub because it didn't have any uh smooth parts it was just looked like the brow tines but then nick said that he'd seen uh, a signpost rub that he had a camera on there was a brown ash behind it and a bear had come up came up and clawed the brown ash behind it so i'd never seen that before but how big was it brown ash uh, i was a good size one probably oh yeah big as see they go up them and eat the flowers in the spring that's yeah. how they seed out but you this see was, this was fairly new and yeah. uh but it was it was some odd looking sign but the reason why i didn't think it was moose it, i've seen enough moose rubs there was no nothing smooth and it looked like brow tines but it could have been bear claws i guess yeah and uh but it was dug in pretty deep, and the reason why I assumed it was a deer was we found a rub line and a scrape line yeah. within short distance. So it was some serious-looking sign, whatever it was. Huh. Yeah. Well, I think most of the guys in camp see deer today, it sounded like, from talking yeah. to them. Yeah, so it sounded pretty eventful. Pretty good for a warm day to yeah. see that many deer. I want you to look at that picture, Hal, and see what you think. Uh -oh. That rub. Oh, this is the one you're talking about, Lee? Yeah. 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 
It's odd looking sign. I mean, it, it? It, it looks yeah. like a deer rub except for the height of it. I mean, it is up there. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, but it looks it's, it looks like brow tines that are like scraping down the. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. it's got to be it's got to be a bear the way that box rolled back, shredded. You know, that's what I'd right. say. Up there, that high, you know. Yeah. Unless a moose just put the tines to it, you know, rub. Yeah, it. but it was really like I said that moose their their tines aren't that sharp. I mean, this looked yeah. really sharp, and it was dug in deep, and moose had to be bare. To it's it's like it raked down in the back rolled down like it was being cut but then you know? on the back side though it was raked up there was a there was one on the back that was raked up and two on the front raked huh. up. Ah, that's strange strange yeah something something new and exciting yeah you never know what you're going to see in the woods yeah oh you know what i see today in the woods first time in years and years a hunter oh really i never see a hunter in the woods and uh he wouldn't even wave I think he was mad because he was. I was aggravated. You were in my spot. (laughs) (laughs) It was way. I was going to say, what a dick. And then you spoke up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because it was. He had to walk like to get where he was. He was he was right by a winter road, but he was just like got off the winter road and like standing out in a little hardwood bowl there. But I'd. uh, I'd come in for, he'd probably walk, it had, it's got to be two miles, yeah, uphill. <laughs> and he's, uh, he's probably wondering where, because we came from down, from the other way, so he, he was probably bewildered about how we got there. We you got, waved to him, you didn't wave got, back? No, <laughs> he just stood there like kind of, he kind of looking at us goodbye, just, it was like he was up on the ridge there, a ways, 100 yards, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then we ended up down to you. Your signpost with the camera on it, you found last year. You said you were. Saying, oh yeah, that one. Yeah, the, the camera on it still. Yeah, I waved to it. Huh. Yeah. 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 That was that one, like uh, the winter road around. Yeah, seven. that's a, that's the one you talked. Yeah. yeah, I know. I knew that was the one because I went. I tracked that buck by it last fall. Okay. Last muzzleloader season. Was it freshened up at all? No, nope. no, nope. wasn't yeah. touched. Good, it saved me a trip. Yeah, wasn't touched. So, uh, but I wonder if he ever grabbed the camera off there. If he just left it on. I don't know. Huh? Yeah. Did yeah. It wasn't touched. But did you check any of your other signposts today? Did you no, see any to see no, if they've been jacked up? No, I didn't go. I went to I went to a place. I hadn't been in there for. I hadn't actually been. I was in there last fall, and the reason I decided to go up there was because I tracked a buck up in there and jumped it way up in, and there was plenty of sign you know muzzleloader season and that's how i said i'm going to take a walk up there and just kind of see how all that stuff meshes because i hadn't been up in there since they'd cut that and i i got thinking about it. i said ah, it's probably 10 years ago and i was thinking i think it's probably more like 15 years ago hmm. when did steve coleman pass away what year was that uh 20 12, I think. Yeah, so it's been over 10 years, and he he was the one that laid that cut, them cuts out. Okay. So it's probably 15 years ago that was done. I can't, I just lose such track of time, you know. It seems like to me it was the other day, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I wonder if we're going to find things different, like the place that I'm going to check tomorrow was uh, a spot where I brought my shed hunters looking for moose antlers and we ended up we found i think four deer antlers and it's in a place where you wouldn't normally find oh, well, deer i know antlers. where you went today no i didn't go there i'm going there tomorrow oh, okay but uh down by the river i think those last two winters some deer that probably normally would either go to town or go to a yard somewhere they've been staying down along the river because the winters have been so easy i'm going to yeah. check that out tomorrow i think it'll be interesting to see it's going to be different. But, so, uh, if you stay when you when you go down that road, and you take the spur road to the left. Yeah. If you stay to the left, you'll be good. But I got Matt's working down there to the right at the end of that road, doing a trail for me. Oh, he is. Yeah. Just so you know, just it's it's a ways. It's not going to affect anything you're doing, but just yeah. so you know, when you go in there. What's he got for a truck? Uh, Red Dodge Marine. Yeah, Marine oh, yeah. Dodge. Yeah, I know what it is. Yeah. I've seen yeah, it. Yeah, with yeah. a with an aftermarket. He, bumper he's parked it. in there at, beyond that. 
like two miles beyond. You know what's you funny? I, I heard him working. Is he working there today? Because yeah. I heard. Yeah. Uh, I heard equipment. We weren't down there today, but we were close enough. I said, "Oh, somebody's yeah. somebody's logging around here." Yeah, so. they're moving us off the big road there and and putting us down through the woods. So we had to do a new section of trail. So yeah, he's when down I there took, doing that. Uh, I think I told you when I took Scott Dale in there, looking for sheds this spring. We went. Two of us went on one side of the road, and uh, two of us went on the other. And I bet in. A half an hour, we saw like eight or ten deer. Mm-hmm. It was they were there this spring. Of course, I don't mean they're gonna be there this fall, but I haven't been back in oh, since I, this spring. I've I've thought about that area. I bet they're holding. I'm anxious to see how you make out down there. There was some buck sign. It was a long ways in, but there's an old there's an old winter road. Not really a winter road, but a, a skid trail that's fairly clean. Yeah, it goes way in there deep, and uh, there was some buck sign in there. So, like I said, I'm gonna that place that we found that was stove up with buck sign today i'm gonna to put my guy in there it's not too far away and have him sit for you know a couple hours tomorrow morning and then i'll check the other oh, that spot. was that was south of here that you found all that sign yeah oh good yeah. okay yeah wow lee really changing things up yeah well there's no snow and i thought you know i haven't been south I've, i never hunt south of town but there's no snow so i said i might as well go in there and check and i'm glad i yeah. did yeah. good place for you yeah. <laughs> I, I was the guy that you saw. You just didn't realize it. <laughs> He's like that without waving. Uh. Boy, some of these cuts they're doing now are like the old days. Oh, I know. Holy cow. Big ones. Like, oh. Yeah. yeah. They wonder must. Why. What do they get like a. Yeah, I wonder why. I was, that's all I was saying. Yeah. Which, which honestly, I, I feel like I'd almost rather see him do that now. Just cut the whole thing because they use, they lose half of it to the wind anyway. If yeah. you don't, if you end you're up right. especially fur and well fur more than the spruce, but if you're going to do a soft wood cut, those ones that they leave stand in the next winter, they're down anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's a waste of money. That's yeah. nothing but root balls. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I bet that one is it's probably eighty or hundred acres. It's got to yeah. be, I think. I think a hundred's a limit, and that's only with a twenty-five. With, I think it's twenty-five acres without a permit. Then you can get a special permit to go beyond that. So yeah, it's probably probably a lot of permits in. You know. Yeah. 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 It was a nice piece of deer woods too. It was a place that I've been in the past, and it was just always one of those places you go into, and it was open enough that you could see, but the deer liked it. And yeah. Yeah. We get in there, and and I mean they flattened it. it yeah. 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 That's why I don't usually hunt south of town is because it's hard to find a place that hasn't been flattened. But you got those once in a while, you'll find a honey hole, and you, every year you say, oh, I can't believe they haven't cut it. Oh, I can't believe they haven't <laughs> yep. cut it. Yeah. They find them. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Like them. We got some yep. down down our way, down below Bingham where we hunt. and it's oof. There's not many places left that haven't been stove up. Yeah. The deer like it. It's just hard to kill them. In yeah. There, you know, when it, gets, yeah, when it right. starts growing back. It's good for a few years, and then yeah. that's it. I think when they get those fresh cuts like that, the deer that are on, they've been doing it for so long, and they just, it's like habit going across them, you know, even if there's, yeah, I mean, there's tops in there and stuff they can well, feed I, on. but Yeah. I just had the discussion with the younger guides over at the guide camp there. We were talking about up around Gold Brook area, and. I remember uh, back in the 90s, you were seeing all these huge bucks that were being shot between Eustace and Jackman, and I talked with some of the guys that were doing it. Well, when they made those big clear cuts up there, those deer were so used to going in certain spots, their migration trails, that they'd have great big giant clear cuts, and if you had plenty of snow by Thanksgiving week, you just went out and sat on the edge of them clear cuts, and those bucks right in the middle of the day would walk right through them, and they shot a lot of big bucks in that country just because that was their habit. They'd always done it, yeah. and the clear cuts didn't stop them. It's crying shame, really. Yeah, well, they, could, they thinned them out pretty well over in that country. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had a thought. It was fleeting. Was it, was I had it related one. to fanny packs? What's that? Was it related to fanny packs? No. No, just a, it was just a funny story. I don't know if I told you that. Did I tell you the story about falling down the stairs the last time? When you were with me? No. no. You've f- you fallen down again since then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So the morning I had to take Deb to New York to see the surgeon, get up, and I was I hadn't I'd been so busy with everything. I didn't have my clothes packed or anything, and we had to leave at nine o'clock, whatever it was, doesn't matter. So I was getting my clothes together, and and she'd get up and was messing around, getting ready, and I uh, she she had juice. She made her juice up for the ride or something, and. She went to set it down, and some some reason a little bit of it spilled at the top of the stairs. So I run and get a paper towel, and I wiped it all up. But I guess it wasn't good enough because she come right behind me with one, and wet, a wet one. She went and wet one, and she goes, ah, it's going to be sticky. I said, I wiped it up. She goes, yeah, but it'll be sticky. So she wipes it up anyway with a wet paper towel. Meanwhile, I'd sat down because I was doing something on my computer, something last minute. And then something popped into my mind. I go, oh, it was about Ben. Because Ben, I I knew he was up guiding a cow moose hunt for Brian. So I said, i got to get a message to Ben. So I said, i got to take my inReach with me. So I, I jumped out of my chair, you know, kind of in a hurry like I always am. And I went over to the stairwell. And I had my slippers on. And I hit that. I didn't even realize how much water was there well i hit that and my feet i like levitated my feet i mean i went so quick my feet went out from under me i was pitched right forward headed downstairs and i tried to get a hold of the railing and when i did i didn't get it with both hands so i couldn't hold it with one hand i my middle finger i popped that joint out of socket because i think i probably only maybe got one finger i don't know what i did but anyways i'm, I'm a bit concerned about you lately al i know I'm going to have to be bubble wrapped pretty quick. (laughs) So anyways, meanwhile, so I couldn't stop myself, so I landed right on the stairs, headed down, head first. So I pulled my neck up, and I rode it out all the way down to the landing. It's 10 (laughs) stairs. Kalump, kalump, kalump. My shoulder, my hip, my ankle. My shoulder, my hip, my ankle. Every step was like that. Kalump, 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 kalump. And I landed on on the landing there at the corner down there. She comes running down all in a fright, you know. Ah, you all right? You all right? You all right? I go, yeah, just let me lay here, man. I'll see what hurts the most, you know. <laughs> and I determined it was my shoulder. It felt like somebody hit me in the shoulder, like with a pickaxe or something, and it, like, drove it in like I had, a, like, a bad muscle cramp in the, my shoulder. And then I had a big knot on it where that bone goes across. And uh, I had a, what, well, you got a cramp? <laughs> Ben's doing a little jig here. Got a leg cramp. Didn't drink enough water today. I thought he was headed to the men's room the way he was acting. <laughs> I don't get those very often. That was a bad one. So, uh, anyways, I get up. I went up, went upstairs, sat down. I said, Let me sit in here for a minute. You know, it hurt like heck, you know. I sat there for a minute and I, I figured out it wasn't nothing serious, but it just hurt, you know. Kind of like the steps over at the lodge that day. <laughs> so anyways, we had to go like within a half an hour. We jumped in the car, drove all the way to New York like that. And it had that big cramp in it. Got our hotel room. Get up in the morning. I brought my rope to do my stretching with. I do in the morning. I'm doing all my neck stretching, my leg stretching and all that stuff. And I do leg lifts too, you know. But I've had that knot in my back for two or three years, you know, on this side that I always get that knot, and it's like a, goes out of place, and it'll be like a big knotted muscle in there, like a size of a marble. Well, anyway, I get up in the morning, usually in the morning when I go to do my leg lifts, it kind of hurts at first, and some mornings, if it's bad, I can't even lift my legs because it hurts too bad. I lifted my legs right up, spread them apart, lift them down. No pain in my back, and it's been that way ever since, and the knot is gone. Just like that. Yeah. So I, I did my old chiropractic work yeah. going down the stairs. Just so get thrown down the stairs? I just got to remember that combination of how I hit yeah, going how down hit. them stairs. Yeah, if, I, if that ever goes <laughs> back out again. You're lucky you didn't get hurt going down yeah. those things. Well, did this hurt. is uh, – he's. <laughs> it's been, always just for deer season, too. I've been feeling guilty ever since, but I'll never forget he ended up the two trips I made to the lodge, Penobscot. The first one, you fell down the stairs – the next one, the roof collapsed on you. And then about a week later, 
Deb was on Facebook trying to get somebody to go up to your remote camp with you. And Kelly said, can you go up to remote camp with Hal? And I said, Kelly, i got to get my own stuff done. I can't go with him every time. And that was the day you shot yourself in the hand with a nail gun. Yeah. So I felt guilty ever since. <laughs> Although probably he would have shot me with the nail gun, probably. <laughs> yeah, and it said, hold that corner, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Pull my finger. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, I couldn't believe it, though. Deb I, goes, when I, I told her that in the morning there, after I did them, because she was still asleep and I was doing them, it was like daylight, and uh, she goes, I told you, God's got a sense of humor. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so now you're going to be good for deer season is what this is all leading up to yep. is your back doesn't bother yep. you anymore. Yeah, I had a little kink in my neck, though, but I think I'm working that out, ducking under all the limbs and stuff now, <laughs> getting my aerobics in, you know. Last time I went down a set of stairs was in the house that you guys are staying in next door. Yeah. The stairs going up to the master. Yeah. And we had ripped the roof off, and we were redoing the whole place, and we got, I don't know, it was like in April, we got a couple inches of snow one night. So we come in in the morning to go to work, and the whole upstairs, everything's covered in snow, you know, the roof right off of it. And I come to the top of the stairs, and I've got a armload of stuff, my tool belt and everything, and I, I looked at all the guys working. I said, y'all be careful on the stairs. There's snow. It's slick. And I mean, I took one step. <laughs> I went right to the bottom. I mean, oh, all the way to the bottom, and I ended up upside down at, oh. at, at the bottom, and everyone's running over. I was like, I'm all right. No, I'm okay. Yeah. Jeez. But yeah, warning everyone else, and then do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> but so anyway, so I thought you'd like that story, Lee. Well, I've already told Kelly, I said, we got to make sure this winter, pray for a mild winter, because if I can get some of my work done this winter, I'll be more likely. Alan called me. I forgot to tell you that. Alan called me like two weeks ago and said, uh, just so you'll know, he said, I'd really appreciate it if you could go up some with Hal next spring. <laughs> I was like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do for you. <laughs> he wants to get that guides camp jacked up. Yeah, that's going to be a little project. It's a pretty good-sized building. Hey, Hal here. I want to talk a little bit about uh, our partnership with Onyx Hunt. Um, I've been using it for a while now, and if anybody knows me, they know I'm not a very techy person, but the Onyx app is really, it's a real time saver. I remember the days when we poured over topo maps everywhere we was going to go and stuff, and I don't, uh, I don't do that quite as much anymore. Where it's really helped me is is uh, scouting, you know, whether it's deer scouting, a moose, or even turkey hunting in the spring, which I do. It uh, it really helps out. I don't have to spend as much time running around the truck burning up the gas. I uh, I'm just basically using my Onyx. Got it on my phone. Don't even carry a GPS anymore. So uh, I just download the areas where i'm going to be hunting whether it's up north moose hunting and and uh i use it mostly on the uh satellite imagery i like to see the the cuts and the clearings and the turkey hunting the hidden fields and stuff but uh everybody's using it now from the game wardens to the to uh land surveyors and and uh just a great tool and uh with our partnership with with uh onyx if you use a code BWB, you're going to receive 20% off on your first premium or elite memberships. And you just go to onxmaps.com slash hunt. You'll be glad you did. Good luck on the trail. Hi, everyone. Team member Mark Sheeran here. Listen, everybody's been asking why we switched to the Skinner Peep Sites uh, this year. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of reasons. First of all, the owner of Skinner Sites, Andy Larson, was willing to collaborate with us to build the best ghost site for tracking on the market. And uh, he took our input and really put it into practice. And uh, the, the, the aperture, the ghost ring itself is thinner, so it allows more light in. Uh, it's all steel construction. It's got a lifetime warranty. And, and it's also a very elegant site. So uh, there, there are some other features as well. The, the ghost site itself is dovetailed into the body of the site, which makes it really, really sturdy, and it can't fall out of adjustment. And between that and the fact that it's all steel 
and uh, and the peat site is optimized for the tracker and the still hunter. It's an amazing site. So you can go on to bigwoodsbucks.com and get your BWB tracker series peat site today. All right, good luck on the hunt. Is out there is a great job opportunity for you. Wireless Construction out of Standish, Maine is looking for some new employees. A great two-decade-old company, and they have opportunities in steel fabrication, civil technician, tower technician, tower welders, and fabricators, and outdoor voyages. It's my kind of job. Experience is a plus, but not a requirement, and they have great a, a great benefit package with dental, health, vision, 401k, long and short-term disability, life insurance, paid time off, living expense per diem when applicable, a $300 tool and gear allowance, Geez, I might get a job there by the looks of this. If you have any interest, which I think some of you might, you can contact Darcy Weber at 207-642-5751. Or you can email him at employment at wcitowers.com. Hope you get your job. How Speaking of it? that country, uh, I'll, I don't know if I told you, but... When's the last time you went up in zone four and saw four times as many deer as you did moose? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, which is kind of a cool thing, but we saw... Is that good for saw, the deer or bad for the moose? Well, we saw, we saw eight deer. You know, we were out you know, looking for moose, obviously, but we saw eight deer and two of them were bucks. And, uh, and then Stephen's got some pictures of them on his trail camera and he saw deer. So I think uh, that was two easy winners we've had. Oh, yeah. We're, so, we're, ha- we're going to have some deer. Yeah, I was up there last Saturday, and I just poked around where I shot that dominant spike last year. <laughs> and, uh, I ended up, I ended up running into a. There's quite a few deer up in that area. I let a small buck go right where I jumped that one. There was deer all around, all around. Yeah, Stephen had told me there was, and he wasn't mm-hmm. lying. There's plenty of them around. It don't take long. It, they took it hard, you know them them two. The falls, we had all that snow because a lot of them took it hard because they got to Canada before the Canadian season closed and a lot of them got picked off, you know. But it don't take them long. You've got some decent weather. It don't take long for them to come back around. And here, I I would say here now looks to me like it did like back in the 90s. You know what I mean? There's that kind of deer around again. Yeah, for sure. Is that uh, have you noticed in town? Are the Vermonters back in Jackman like they were pre Ontario days? Seem too, no, no, it Nick? doesn't seem too busy. The, there's a few, but the town's not busy now. Late, they, they all, even them guys. A lot of times, they the third week is, seems to be yeah. the busiest week. Nick said every truck he saw today was Vermont. Me too. Yeah, well, yeah. same thing. I didn't see any. Tr- I mean, I saw some on the way out. It was getting dark, but it's. They like to come early because it's right. Their There's season starts the in a couple you know, weeks. Yeah, they get two weeks to come here and then they start over there. And but uh, yeah, yeah, I think people are figuring out that there's enough deer around again, and and uh, so they're gonna. I, I saw a it. friend of mine posted some pictures from Ontario from three or four years ago. They killed some nice bucks, and I meant to give them a call and. Ask him where he went and how it was because, you know, just, I mean, it was just a couple of them that they went and they, they both killed nice bucks. And, yeah, we haven't, you know, a long I thought time if, since I've been back. Yeah, I was, you well, know, we always talk about doing a trip back out there. Yeah, Ontario's a big province, but I've talked to guys in that Canary and they said there ain't no deer out there really. Right. Around town there is, but, you know, the eastern Ontario is totally different and a lot of people hunt there too, you know. So would the eastern be like Dryden? Is that eastern? no? That's west. That's the furthest west, northwest. Eastern Ontario comes all the way over to um, what's that town? You you go by Montreal and you go a little ways and you're in Ontario already. I mean Ontario's long it's a big ways province. across that. No, when we used to go to Dryden, Dryden's just a short. It's not too far from Dryden to Kenora. Right. So yeah, no, that's northwest. That's right over. I mean, Kenora is almost on the Manitoba border. Jeez, I didn't remember being that close, but. Oh, yeah. There, right there was, we flew into. There was a road north of Kenora. We went over there once and tried it. We drove, just drove over. Yep. And That's where I shot my buck. Yep. In Kenora. Yep. And that, 
we drove in that road. I can't even remember the name of it now, but it ended about two miles from on from Manitoba. That's how that road went in. It was went north from Kenora, and it went in to the west. I think it was like forty kilometers. So whatever that is, six times four is twenty twenty five miles. Say. So and it was only a couple more miles, and you was in Manitoba. Reddit was the town. I was just I was trying to think. It was called Reddit, which yeah, that's was just north of Kenora. North and a little bit e- east, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we unless you went another trip, we only hunted. I only hunted Kenora one day because remember we we brought our regular rifles with us. We were hunting in Dryden. We were hunting with muzzleloaders, but the Kenora season opened up so we could use our regular rifles right because i remember I, I shot that buck out there with my 99 savage right and that was that year it was so miserable hot i yep. shot that deer it was it was like 75 right. degrees that day i shot the deer it was hot. That. Yep. Hmm. yeah so i mean but they went from all kinds of deer to almost zero so it, to come from zero to build a herd back takes it's quite a while ago though i mean that yep. was 10 years ago at least i think Maybe even longer. It was um, wasn't it? It was a really bad winter, and then the wolves were in yep. into them also, right? It was uh, two thousand and uh, I think I went there in twelve, and it was still good. But it was the winter after, yeah. I, I want to say, because I went thirteen, and that's when it was. I mean, I went to a place then that was I'd found it. I sh- that uh, the buck I call a snowfall buck there. That area was full of deer. I mean, it was crazy with deer sign in there. Went back the next year. There was one deer pass through there, one buck, and we got on it, and he never stopped. He went cross country, and we never saw a doe track. We never saw nothing in all them miles. <laughs> and, I mean, there was a lot of deer in there. You could walk through them cuts and see deer everywhere. Huh. Well, was, was, that so, the, was that the same year, or was that the year after we went out on the peninsula, which was full of deer? We went out on the peninsula. It was the same way. There was... No buck sign, and it didn't seem like there was. No, that was idea. actually before that because they that was, the that wolves was crazy. The wolves got out there and really raised hell with them deer out because they were yarding on that peninsula there, and that was a that was actually a couple of years before the bad yeah. winters they had. Because we had stopped going, and the only reason I'd gone out there then was I took I took my buddy Steve out there, and because uh, there was snow. We went, I can't remember when it was, but there was some snow, so we went. But there weren't many deer. I mean, we, there was no, not enough deer in the woods to go try to find a track in the woods like we used to. Mm-hmm. So we just rode trying to find a track, and sometimes we'd ride half a day to find a buck track. On the, you imagine? I mean, it went. that's what it went to. So... Was that the same year that you guys had the long walk? Uh, no, it was after that. No. It was after, it was, I think it was the year, might have been the year after that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, I mean, it cycles around back. You know, the winter, in the north, the winter is going to be the controlling factor anyway. And the winter, and then of course, wolves out there and coyotes here, but. Since we've got that taken care of here, I even if we have bad winters now, it's it's not going to be as devastating, I don't think, as it could be. You know. Well, I think it's different now because of the towns. Number one. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, that's a big help too. Feeding them and keeping and them going. You another the, thing that I think is going to be beneficial is uh, we saw it up in Zone Four. There's sometimes if they've got big, big groves of maples like Hardwood Ridge, that's predominantly maple. They're leaving them now, I think, if they're close enough to them sugaring operations. I think that's going to be beneficial, too. I think they're trying to leave some of those maple groves. Well, yeah, they don't cut no maple trees where them sugar camps are. Yeah. Yeah. And even, like, down the road, like, there's a place, oh, it's close to the one that's, uh, if you take a right at the four-way intersection and go up where we hunt, that sugaring operation there, there's probably, we we found two different hardwood ridges that there's no sugar in operation there but they haven't cut the maple and i just figured well maybe they're gonna well they will because all that up in that country they reserve because that when they started that sugar camp there you know they 
they had picked this whole area, and so, but it just takes a long time to get them lines everywhere, you know. Boy, that one they got right on the Golden Road isn't that? Wow. That thing is a that's, beast, huh? That sure yeah. is. They, that, now I see they built a new one down across the river. They must be, yep. uh, they must be pumping down to it or something. Yeah, it yeah, goes they, right down yeah. the opposite side of the road down yeah. to the river, which yeah. I thought was they're strange. They're going to pump it across the river. They are. They're going to pump huh. it up to that place right there. Okay, yeah. it's okay. unreal. Wow, that's a big operation. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's good. It's it's uh I mean, I like it because it puts value on a standing tree. That's right. Yeah. And uh, you know, I guess having lines all through the woods isn't the yep. greatest thing, but you know, I it's, think it's, it's better than It's the, kinda ugly, but the deer like them. They, there's a lot of deer in them sugar operations because they keep everything trimmed back, so there's always new growth. New growth. So they cut all the stuff because they don't want to walk through all the whips, yeah. so they keep cutting it back, and then it makes new growth again. Huh. So, I wonder yeah. how much of a problem the moose are, if at all. If they walk through, it's not. It's if they get spooked and run is usually what yeah. happens. They get running down through, and they'll wipe them lines because they'll, you know, even a moose will duck under stuff and... Yeah, they're not just going to come up against a line and try to push it, you know. I think I, I'm pretty sure that I told you, but back years ago, when you still had your other operation, and I was uh, one of the first years that I guided for you, you took me up near the sugar shack up there and showed me some places where you and Mike used to hunt. I remember that year there was a buck, and I think he was using them sugar lines for his licking branch because there would be scrapes huh. underneath those lines you know how like they'll if there's an overhanging yeah. branch and they'll and they'll leave their white their yep. orbital gland on that there was a buck up there that was making scrapes right underneath those low hanging huh. sugar lines and i thought i wonder if he's using that for his licking branch <laughs> it could be it was kind of strange but it, yeah it made me think of it yeah huh what's everyone's plans for tomorrow well, just keep moving around. Yeah, I'm going to go down where you told me and just make sure I don't get in front of Matt. If he Maybe works, you if, want to. If he works in the woods like he does in hunts, he'd probably go right over the top of you pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty quick down through there with his machine. Yeah. yeah. No, I, in this warmer weather, it's, you know, you got to get going early. And I was telling the guys yesterday, just when it's still cool in the morning is when you want to work your way up. If you're going to go up on the ridges, I like to go up high on the ridges where the green is on the top and kind of bop along that edge and stuff up high. But when it's cool in the morning, you can get up there and then hunt along for the day, you know, along kind of level going and bop up and down, and you don't have to work up a sweat trying to get up there. And then at the end of the day, it's downhill, you know. That's what we did today. I mean, we made a pretty good-sized loop and stuff, but... So, yeah, just keep repeating the process. That's all I know to do is you do what you know works, and the law of averages will catch up, you know. It's just, it, it's a, for the first week, it kind of ends up being like a double whammy because the big ones ain't moving that much anyways yet. You know, the, this buck's moving, but not the real big ones. They just, they just, they know when the time is, and they wait for it. So uh, you got that on top when it's warm, and... There ain't going to be as much daytime activity, you know. The good news is you heard <clears throat> that uh, we're going to get a couple of cooler days next week. It's supposed to cool off next week, and they, they're showing two days of snow showers. some kind of snow showers. Or, that's too far when out. When that's out, it's that far. We don't know what it's going right. to be. Yeah. Could get a snowstorm, could get a rainstorm. But yeah. at least precipitation is what helps because it quiets things down and and it helps keep it cool when it's cloudy and overcast, you know. My glass is always half full. Yeah. So, yeah. Keep yeah. it out of me. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Not full the same way Joe's is half full. But. That's right. <laughs> well, it's not quite half anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, it. You got to be, you got to be optimistic, and yep. you know, you can over the next rise, it can be one standing there or laying there yep. or whatever it is. You just, yeah, you just got to go. So, um, but anyway, so I got to give a little update on uh, wool stuff because everybody, we appreciate everybody's patience. It's just, it's been a, it's been an ongoing process here and we're learning a lot about it, but 
we finally the the packs are all done and by the time people hear this most everybody's got their pack shipped to them the rest of the packs you know we we ordered more than it was shipped obviously but um that stuff's done and they're working on the jackets and they have all the materials for it and they've told us it's they're working on it so the jacket should come pretty quick and you know we they we could only go by the dates they gave us and so we put it out there that they'd be ready for deer season and they're not so makes us look it a little sucks. bad but yeah it I does mean, suck i mean yeah <clears throat> nothing you can do about it you know that <clears throat> and you pointed it out in the post you made you know that the big thing here was getting everything made in the usa and i think yep. for most people they'd rather have that than yeah you know he was adamant about that and and because of that some of the, of the supply chain we couldn't get certain things we can get the stuff but not in a timely manner and, you know what i mean and that is something i see a lot of where people i think some people question the whole supply chain uh you know for lack of a better word excuse but it's real it's real and the main reason for it is is there's not enough people want to work to make the stuff that's what the supply that's yeah. the problem with the supply the is labor. they can't make enough to keep everything satisfied like they used to cuz quite frankly that there's a lot of people just don't want to work they'd rather sit home you know so that's what creates these problems for us and like the last thing was the zippers for the jackets and who knew every size jacket takes a different length zipper you know i wouldn't have never thought of that but it's logic so instead of ordering 500 of one length zipper we had to figure out how many different the number of sizes we ordered you know the how many of each size and and get them that way and and then uh see joel can't even use the zipper they just put one button on his <laughs> <laughs> what are you picking on joel for he can't even defend himself yeah but i want him to know i'm thinking of him <laughs> i ran into him by chance i was coming down moose hunting i was coming down through ashland and uh I bumped into him on the road. He was headed one way, I was headed the other, and I said, hey, I think that's Joel. I had my client with me, turned around, went back, and shot the breeze with him for a while. I hadn't seen him since, well, the Big Woods thing, but, yeah, I like to make sure every once in a while he feels included. <laughs> that's, that's Fred and Barney right there. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway, so that's, that's it. It's coming. The stuff's coming, and, oh, I meant to bring him down tonight. I've got the... I've got the uh, prototype of the pants oh you do show okay use. yeah they sent it like to, to me see that we sent a pair to them and they i think they made the same size because that's what the size they had you know i don't know it's a 38 whatever but they're unfinished seams of course that's the way we're doing them so but they look nice to me but everybody i'll bring them down tomorrow night so everybody can look at them and, and yeah uh, so that'll be next you know the jackets and the pants and obviously I wouldn't even say the pants are going to be ready for deer season, but they'll be ready. They're going to be that 18 ounce. And well, I guess if nothing else, maybe the pants will be ready for Christmas. Yeah. Maybe we'll have a Christmas sale. I shouldn't say that too loud. We've got to run that by the CEO. Wow. <laughs> At this point, he'll probably go along with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, thanks for your patience, everybody. and. You know, we apologize. As we're doing what we can if it, do. If it was something, and it is frustrating, any time that something's holding you up that you have no control over, like if it was something we had control over, the whole entire crew would be here. We'd be working all night long to right. get it done, you know? Yeah. Right. That's what, you just do it. We have no and, control. And uh, when yeah. you have no control, it is frustrating. Because I hear it from Liz's end because the phone rings off the hook nonstop. Yeah. And I understand everyone's excited and wants their jacket for deer season. I totally get it. Yeah. But I... Uh, you know, when when you can't do anything about it and, and uh, you know, you're just sitting there kind of yep. in the holding pattern. <laughs> yeah. It's frustrating. But hopefully they'll get the jackets all done here soon and we can get that behind us and move on to, to yeah. pants. Yeah. Well, we got to get some shut-eye. Yep. Ben, ben and all the guides are over there. 
partying last night till oh, yeah. all hours, so oh, yeah. he's got to get some sleep. Yeah, I'm glad I got a security deposit on the guide's cabin. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Have you seen it today? <laughs> Hopefully we got hot water. This is the second year in a row we've had to shower with cold water over there. So. Uh-oh. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, you know Joe, what's put, funny a, is, put another breaker in. Well, that, they don't, they don't think rented. it's, they that don't think it's funny, rented. Joe. For the whole, since last December, and I know they didn't go without hot water, and they just left two weeks ago, and then it just started tripping. I don't know if the breaker Strange. went bad, but anyway, <laughs> you got hot water now. Yep. And ben if you don't, I don't care. Yeah, I know. You, you you're will. halfway into you your You will business. at the end of the week. <laughs> ben was a good guy, and he felt bad for the old man. I'm over there with a bunch of kids, and Brent, Ben had taken my master suite over there, but he, he gave it to me and told me that he'd bunk up with Steven and the other guys. So the, the old man's got the master suite. Hey, geez. You a couple hundred bucks? You should have yeah. it, Lee. That's, yeah. uh, that's just elderly respect. Yeah, it Absolutely. is. Right. Absolutely. I didn't even have to ask him. He, he just you, did it. Did you get him to rub your feet at night, too? No, uh, he no I don't do that. I don't do male no. touching. <laughs> <laughs> we were almost out of this thing, too. I know what. Yeah. I know what. It's good. Done. It's going south. Yeah. Well, once again, thanks for listening in and uh, support our sponsors there and ding the bell to join up for you know, all your videos on YouTube. and and uh, Yeah, we're up to... Uh, Subscriptions are pretty good. They're we're somewhere up around twenty seven thousand, I think. So if we appreciate yeah. the support and yeah, yeah, and then uh, long ways to go. Yeah, our uh, when Mark Kenyon there from Meat Eater come last fall, that film just come out. It's on the Meat Eater. That was good. YouTube, yeah, that came out pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. So, uh, well, we got a couple more weeks to. Get some deer hunting in, then we'll be back talking deer hunting again with everybody. So, until then, good luck on the trail. Hi, everyone. This is Big Woods Bucks team member Mark Sheeran. A lot of you know that I've been working with uh, addicts and alcoholics now for the last 32 years. And one of the things that we just developed, which is very exciting, is the Freedom Model online program. And this program makes it so that you can learn the entire Freedom Model curriculum, all 470 pages of it. Uh, through pre-recorded video tutorials that myself and Michelle Dunbar, the other co-author of the Freedom Model, uh, built for you. So you'll be able to learn the entire uh, curriculum, how to get over an addiction without AA meetings, without rehab, without endless therapies, without recovery, and you can move on from this problem for good. If you want more information about this, go to online.thefreedommodel.org. That's online thefreedommodel.org or call 888-424-2626 and if you want that program for 50% off use code BWB22 that's BWB22 so go to that address hit the enroll now button use that coupon code and you'll have a program for the rest of your life you can use it anytime you want you'll get all updates it's a one time fee and it's very affordable and you'll get it for 50% off, BWB22. All right, everybody, take care. Hey, guys, Joe here. Wanted to take a few minutes to talk about Lake Parlin Lodge. We're a uh, four-season lodge located just south of Jackman. We've got cabins, lodge rooms, mini lodge. We're a big snowmobile destination in the winter, full restaurant, bar, all the amenities that you need for your trip. Open, all obviously, through the summer, right on the lake. Kayaks, canoes, all included with the cabin. We also do a lot of weddings, so if you're looking for a destination wedding, we can do a wedding up to 200 people. And, uh, of course, we've got our hunting season, moose season, deer season. So check us out. We're at lakeparlinlodge.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time, good luck on the trail.